Hello everyone, and welcome to Slice Print Roleplay. In this episode, I'm going to be explaining how you can take a 3D model, an STL, before you print it and throw some paint on it, get an idea of what it's going to look like with different color palettes, so that way once you have the physical model in your hand, you have kind of a jump start on what you want to do with it. Alright, let's get into it. So the program that I'm going to be using is called Paint 3D. It is native to Windows 10. I think all versions of Windows 10 should have it. If they don't have it, it should be free. So you can find it on the marketplace. Um, the closest equivalent that I could find for Mac is called SketchUp, and I believe it should have all the same features. But if it doesn't, please let me know down in the comments because I don't have a Mac, so I can't really test it. So after Paint 3D loads up, it might be running a little slowly. So come down here to this arrow, click on this, and take a look and see if there's anything running that shouldn't be. In my case, I've already turned everything off, but if there's something running in the background like Discord or Skype, if it's something you're not using, go ahead and close it down because it may be using resources from your computer that it would otherwise be able to devote to this program. And then what I like to do is come up to the right and hit maximize so that I have a bigger window and I can see better what I'm doing. And then from there, we're gonna go up to where it says 3D view and click on that. And then what that will allow us to do is we can now move around the model like you can in a slicer. So if you use the right mouse button, hold down, you can move around the model. If you click in on the mouse wheel, you can move back and forth across the model. And then zooming in and out with the mouse wheel will of course zoom in and out on the model. So those are the basic controls. As for the model that I'll be using, this is the Stone Giant from Yasashi. As you can tell, it's a really cool model. I love their stuff and I've used it before on the channel. So definitely check out this model and their Patreon down below. And then over here we have a bunch of different brushes and markers and things. So this is really cool and I, I will not be able to go over all of this. So I encourage anyone that's interested, definitely play around with this because it's a ton of fun. But you get a bunch of different brushes here. Uh, the marker I think is, I've found to have the finest tip. So when you look uh, over here under thickness, you can move this slider up and down or you can manually enter things in. And I go down to one pixel with a marker because it seems like it has the finest tip out of most of the options here. So it's really good for kind of filling in cracks and doing some highlights. The calligraphy pen is really good for just putting a very solid uh, chunk of color down. So as you're painting down the model, it, it paints in really well. All right, so before we go any further, I wanna make something really clear. I am not an artist. I really enjoy painting models, but I've only ever painted a handful in my lifetime because I just haven't been able to devote the time to it to build up the skills to, to really get good at it and feel like it's something that I'm comfortable with. And part of that is because it takes a lot of motivation to get a model ready, get the paints out, get the model painted, work on it for a while, and then put everything away. And in my situation here with the space that I have, I do have to put everything away when I'm done. And getting up the motivation to do all of that is kind of difficult, so I end up not doing any of it. And I'm excited to have found this program because it kind of lets me still get that therapeutic uh, exercise of being able to sit and paint something, but without the extra added effort of putting things away when I'm done. So if you're like me and you enjoy the therapeutic aspect of painting more than anything else, then I do really hope this helps you. But um, yeah, so just wanted to make that clear. I'm not an artist. So what I get into next, if it sounds like I'm, I'm talking with confidence, it's because I'm really good at pretending. And uh, yeah, so we're going to go grab a paint palette, uh, a, a randomly generated paint palette, because I don't know what color theory is, but I could tell you that paint palette is necessary. And for that, I'm going to use this site. And of course, you can find it linked down below. So I'm going to click on this square here. All right, so we ended up with this sort of muted color palette, which I think works really well for a stone giant because being of the earth and having their skin be earthen, it makes sense for their colors to be a bit more muted and, and to toned down a little bit. So I'm going to use this charcoal color for the, the, the overall base, and then I'm going to do some highlighting with the steel blue. And um, again, if it sounds like I know what I'm talking about, it's because I'm throwing out terms that I've heard in the painting world and hoping that it sounds like I know what I'm doing. So yeah, let's um, let's grab this. And when I say grab, I'm going to copy the hex here. And then I'm just gonna bring it into Paint 3D and click on this swatch, which I also think is a painting term. I'm gonna highlight this by double clicking with the left mouse button. And then you can right click and hit paste, or you can hit Control V once it's highlighted and it, either way it'll paste in that color. Then we'll hit okay. You can see the color here changes. And now I can start showing you what some of these different brushes do. So first off, if you wanna color a model real quick, I'm gonna grab the paint can, turn the tolerance way up, and then I'm gonna click anywhere on the model. And you can see now he's covered with that dark charcoal bluish sort of color. 
And we're gonna do that same thing again. I'm gonna go and grab this steel blue color by copying the hex, coming back over again, highlighting, paste, and now I can kind of show you. So I said before about the marker. So this is really cool. I can zoom in really, really far. And with that tolerance or the thickness turned down to one pixel, I can really like just sort of highlight some of those edges. And I mean, I think I'm remembering now that I should be highlighting the highest points because that's where light would be hitting and there should be shadows in there. Um, so let's, uh, let's put shadows in there instead, right? Yeah, I know what I'm doing. Yep, that's where shadows go. And then, like I said before, the calligraphy pen is really cool because it just drops down a ton of color. So if you want to paint in, a, a, you know, a whole spot in one area, then you can do this really fast by using a calligraphy pen versus something like the pencil. Uh, we'll turn that down a little bit. So turn it down to five. Yeah, sure. And you can see this is much much more for kind of maybe adding some soft shadows into something. So zoom out and you can kind of see the difference there. And then one important note about all of this is that if you ever do something like, let's say you want to see what bright red would look like on this skull. So you put some bright red on there and then you realize it just, it looks, it's too bright. It's weird. Hit control Z and it's gone. It's taken care of. So you hold control and hit Z and that's in most programs, that's going to be the undo button. Um, but an important note about that is let's say that you're using this pen and same kind of thing. So you're making a bunch of small strokes here. You're kind of painting. Maybe you're doing like tribal symbols, um, which is actually kind of cool against the skin. It does sort of look like that. But anyway, so let's say you did these and then you you want to put a slash down through them. You don't like the way that looks. So you want to go and do undo that. So if I hit control Z, I can undo each one of those. However, if I were continuously holding down that button to make that that sort of pattern, then I hit control Z and it's going to undo that whole thing. So make sure that if you kind of want to have more control, you're just using small strokes and not, you know, holding down to cover in an entire area, because then if you make one mistake and you use control Z, it'll cover up or it'll take away everything instead of just being one of these smaller strokes. So again, play around with it. You'll get a good feel for it, but that's just some of the stuff you can do. Another really important and really cool feature is if you click down here, you can use matte gloss, dull metal, polished metal. So this would be like, uh, if we wanted to make, don't really have a good color. This will work just fine. So if we want to make his belt buckles, we want to make those like a polished bronze color. So let's grab this. Yeah, calligraphy pen will work. Oop. Let's drop that down a little bit more. Oh, that's as far as it'll go. That's going to be too big. So let's use paintbrush maybe. Okay, sure. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So yeah, that looks really cool. It does look like polished metal versus let's see what dull metal looks like. Yeah, there's definitely a difference there for sure. You can see it ca the way it catches the light and reflects light back. You can see there's a bit of a difference. So yeah, there's a couple of different options down here, all the different colors down here. You can, you know, grab colors from those, um, the color generator that I used before, which like I said, I'll have linked down below, or you can just play around with this. You can bring in any model you want and just have fun. The only thing I ask is if you do use this, uh, I would be really interested to see what you come up with, because like I said, I'm, I'm not an artist, but I would love to see what an artist can do with this. So if you're going to use this and kind of play around with it, please, please take a screenshot and post it to the slice print role play Facebook group, because I would love to see it. Oh, before we get to the end of the video, I did remember that there's another painting thing that I know about, and it's called Zenithal Highlights. And it's when you uh, you take a, a lighter color, like white, and you go from really high up above the model. So we'll turn the thickness way up so it, yeah, it covers the whole model. And we'll leave that at 25, sure. Um, and you sort of you sort of spray over the model to make it look like that's the, the highlight, that's the, the sunlight that's focusing down from up above, down onto the model. And that's going to be our, our highlights, I guess. And then you use black and I don't know if this part's is necessary, but you go from underneath and you spray the dark lights. I don't, I don't know what the opposite of highlights are shadows, I guess. So yeah. And then you have like your highlights and your shadows and that tells you where, where light is focusing. So you use your lighter colors and then you use the darker colors. And again, I'm not an artist. And I don't know what I'm doing. So <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about, then feel free to explain it down below. 
And with that, we've reached the bottom of my staggeringly shallow reservoir of painting knowledge. So I'm going to color him in with a crayon because that seems fitting. While I say that I really hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please like and subscribe. It does help the channel grow and I really appreciate it. And if you want to support the channel and the work that I'm doing here, you can find all my Patreon information down below. I do have some really cool rewards and I'm working on new stuff all the time, so if that sounds interesting, then definitely check it out. But uh, yeah, I really do hope that you enjoyed this, and if you decide to give it a shot, I would love to see what you're working on if you want to post on the Slice Print Roleplay Facebook group. But otherwise, yeah, let's go paint something.